Hi, this is Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and I'm really excited to start this uh, project with you today. This is the Lustune Varnish Shawl Video 1 and I just wanted to show you this lovely material I'm going to be using. This is um, Barocco's Vintage Decay and just so that you can see some of the information here, 52% acrylic, 40% wool, 8% nylon. Um, it's a really, really nice, um, nice fiber to work with. Okay, now I'm using a slightly different color than the original model. The original model called for the color, I believe it was Sour Cherry. Um, this is a different, uh, a different color. Um, and I'll show you the color number should you want to get this. It's number 2167, available from Barocco.com. All right, well, let's go ahead and begin. Um, we're going to go ahead and start this pattern. Um, we're using a size I crochet hook or the hook that's needed for you to get the same gauge. The gauge is available on the purchase pattern. I just wanted to let you know that it's available from annies.com. I no longer own the rights to this, but um, to this pattern, but Annie's has graciously allowed me to make these videos to help you along. Uh, I do highly, highly recommend you get a copy of it. Um, it cost maybe about the cost of um, a latte and a cookie at Starbucks. Okay, so it's not going to break the bank or anything. Um, but and, and and by purchasing that, you will you know help ensure that companies like Annie's and designers like me can continue to design high quality patterns for you. Okay, first thing we're going to do is chain. It says with the size I hook chain 253 chains okay I'm gonna go ahead and start with my slip knot I'm not going to bore you to death with 253 chains but I'm going to show you how I keep track with such a large number with such a large number of chains it's easy to lose the number um, lose track especially if someone walks in the room and starts talking to you and you know how that goes I count by fives and I go like this one, two, three, four, five. And then I reposition. Six, seven, eight, see, eight, nine, ten. And do that again. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, etc. All the way to two hundred and fifty-three. Um another thing about this, this is the foundation chain, so you're gonna want to crochet it kind of loosely. If you tend to be a tight crocheter, you may need to bump the hook up just for the um, just for the foundation chain row. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this chain, and then I'll get back to you with the next step. Still working in row one, um, which says to chain 253. We have 253 chains now, um, and it says to single crochet in second chain from hook, and then each chain across. Okay. A lot of different ways of doing this. I like to work in the side of the chain. Honestly, it really doesn't matter because we're going to be crocheting around the entire piece. The chain's going to be hidden. So do the best, uh, your preferred method here. So I'm just going to single crochet in, in every chain across. At the end of this row, I will have 252 single crochets. And that's going to be uh, a significant number that we're going to stick with as far as our stitch count, I believe, throughout this um, time of crocheting the stole portion of the shawl. I'll go ahead and finish these 252 single crochets and come back to you. Now that I finished row one, I wanted to show you something. There is a slight curl to this row. I just wanted to show you that to show you that this is normal and not to worry about it if yours does this. The next row is going to take a lot of the curl out. Um, and after the next two rows, if you still are getting a lot of curl, you may have to um, undo this and redo the foundation chain with the larger crochet hook like I suggested. But once you do the larger crochet hook, if you have to do that, make sure you go back to your gauge hook afterwards Okay, for this pattern. Okay, we're ready for row two. We are going to chain one and we are going to turn. And then it says the single crochet in each stitch across turn. So we are just going to work another row of single crochet. So I'll go ahead and work my 252 stitches and I'll get back to you. 
Now that we finished row two, it's time to start row three. And this row is called the low front ridge. So we're going to chain one, turn, and in this stitch we are only going to work in one of the loops. We're just going to work in this loop, the front loop of the stitch. Okay, and then for row four we're going to come back and we will work in the remaining loop. Okay, it'll also be a working in the front loop when we come back that pass, that direction. Okay, and this row will not affect your stitch count because the next row we're only going to work in the single crochets. But for now, and in order for this stitch to look really good, we're going to skip the first single crochet and we're going to start by working a slip stitch in the second crochet in the second stitch and each one across. I'm just working in, let's see if I can turn this so you can see it better, just the front loop. Okay. We're going to do this all the way across the row. And for this particular time, we will work in the slips in the uh, turning chain. We'll work the last slip stitch in the turning chain. But again, this will not affect the stitch count because it's the following row that will determine and help to maintain our constant stitch count as we go. Okay, let me finish the 252 stitches, get my number correct, and I will be back. Okay, I want to show you the, the end of this, this row. I'm just still working my slip stitch and then I'm going to work the last one. In the turning chain right here. I'm going to chain one, I'm going to turn. Now we're only going to work in the single crochets, we're not going to work in the turning chain. Um, and the first loop might be kind of hard to find, but you can see the single crochet is, uh, is right here. So the first loop might be a little tricky to see, it's the remaining loop, and we're going to work a single crochet, let me pull that loop a little bit closed. We're going to work a single crochet in the remaining loop all the way across. Okay, this would be row four. Okay, we're going to work all the way across. I'm hoping you can you can see this remaining loop clearly. Okay. And again, do not work in the turning chain at the end of this row, just work in the single crochets. Okay, I'm going to work that all the way across and then I will show you what we have when we return. Okay, now that we've finished row number four, we're going to begin rows five and six, uh, which will be the arrow rows. Okay, so for the arrow row, we're going to chain two and um, this pattern has a slightly different variation. If you ever watch my films, uh, my videos on the individual stitches, um, it will vary on how you start these, um, depending on the multiple of the design. Okay, so for this particular one, we're going to double crochet in the first two stitches. Let me show you one thing I just did here. I did chain two, I did not chain three. Um, that might be different for some of you. And the reason I did that is I didn't want a gaping hole here. And yes, I do crochet in the very first stitch of the row. Okay. I don't skip the first stitch. I don't want to have a hole there, if that makes sense. Now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to get ready to do a treble crochet. And we're going to skip one, two, three stitches. And then we're going to treble in the next stitch. Now working behind that treble crochet, we are going to double crochet in the three stitches that we just skipped. Okay, let's take a look at that so that you can see what I just did. We're going to just do that all the way across. Get ready, we're going to skip one, two, three stitches and in the fourth stitch we're going to do a treble crochet, working behind the treble, we're going to double crochet 
in the three stitches. So do be careful that you do a treble crochet. Let's go ahead and show you. Make sure that when we do this stitch, we are doing a treble crochet. You have to wrap the hook twice. Now when we work behind that, we're doing double crochets where you only have to wrap the hook one time. I'll do this one more time and then I will leave you to do this all the way across. Skip one, two, three. And we will treble crochet in the next stitch. Now we're going to work behind the treble and we're going to work three double crochets right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and work this all the way across and then I'll show you what I have at the end and I will work the last um, two or three stitches of this row with you. Okay, we come to the end of row five and at the end of this row we've worked our last arrow stitch there and then we're just simply going to do a double crochet in the last two stitches. Okay, now we're going to chain two, we're going to turn, and we're going to work a double crochet in the first two stitches, like so. Now what we do next is what we're going to do all the way across. Now we're to our arrow row again, and we're going to do a treble crochet. We're going to skip three stitches, one, two, three, which were the double crochets, and we're going to treble crochet in the fourth stitch, which should also be the top of the treble crochet from row five. Okay, we do a treble. Now we're going to do three double crochets, but working in front of the treble crochet. See, right now we're looking at um, the back side of our work. So that's one, two, sorry for all the motion, three. Okay, now we're, now we'll go ahead and we will do that all the way across the row for row six. We're going to skip three, one, two, three, which are the double crochets, treble crochet in the next stitch, which again should be the treble crochet, and then we're going to double crochet in the three stitches that we just skipped. Okay, we are looking at the back side, but I'm going to show you. This is what it looks like from the front side. So you see the arrow portion forming. So go ahead and do this all the way across the row. Now that I'm at the end of the row, I'm going to simply double crochet in the last two stitches. And we're ready to go to rows seven and eight. Okay, we're gonna turn, chain one, and for both rows seven and eight, it's simply single crochet in each stitch across. Okay, working through both loops. Unless, it's always working through both loops unless, you know, unless I say just the front loop or just the back loop or whatever. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish row seven and eight, which is just single crochet. I'll go to the end of the row, chain one, and then single crochet all the way back. And then when we return, we will go on to rows nine and 10. Now that we've completed rows seven and eight, it's time for us to go to rows nine and 10. Now rows nine and 10 are actually a repeat of what we did down here, rows three and four. So the instructions say simply to repeat rows three and four. I'll go ahead and get you started on this just as a reminder. Um, we're gonna skip the first stitch and we're going to work, this is working the low front ridge. We're just going to work in the front loop only and work a slip stitch in each stitch all the way across, just like so. Okay. Just slip stitch all the way across and when we get to the end we will slip stitch in the turning chain. Remember this row does not um, have any bearing on our final stitch count. It's the row that follows this. So once we finish this row we're going to chain one and turn and then we will work in the remaining stitch or the remaining loop of each stitch which is right here. We will go in this loop and we will um, crochet our single crochet in the returning round, or I'm sorry, row, just like just like we did down here. Okay, so row seven 
I'm sorry, rows 9 and 10 are repeat rows 3 and 4. I'm going to go ahead and repeat both rows 3 and 4, and then I will come back and we will work on the woven stitch. Now that we've completed rows 9 and 10, just want to show you what you should have here. Okay, this is what we have so far. Now we're going to start row 11, which starts the woven stitch. To do that, we're going to chain 2. And the woven stitch is going to be worked, working through both loops, but we're going to be doing this in every other stitch or every other single crochet in this row. In subsequent rows, it's going to be in every space between the woven stitches, but right now we'll go ahead and start this row, this row 11. We're going to skip the first one, we're going to wrap the hook, stick the hook in to the space, pull up a loop. Now this is where it gets a little different. Pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two. That's the first half of the woven stitch. We're going to wrap it again, stick the hook in, pull up a loop, and we do not wrap it again. We just pull it through the two loops on the hook, and that's the woven stitch. We're going to skip this stitch, and we're going to do another one in the one right next to it. We wrap the hook, stick the hook in, pull up a loop, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, wrap Stick the hook in, pull up a loop, and pull through two. Let's do that a couple more times. It is an awkward stitch at first, but once your muscle memory gets a feel of it, it will kick in and go a lot faster. Okay, we're going to skip the first, or skip the next stitch rather. Wrap the hook, stick it in, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull up another loop, and pull through two. Yarn over. I'm skipping the stitch there, and for every other stitch, and I'll do a couple more. Yarn over, I'm going to skip the next stitch, and stick it in, pull up a loop, pull through one loop on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, stick it in, pull up a loop, and just pull through two. Okay. This is what we have so far. I'm going to do. I'm going to do two more because this this may be the first time some of you have seen this stitch. It's a little different, but I think you're going to really like it. It adds a nice variation to crochet fabric. Okay, yarn over. We're going to skip this one. Stick the hook in. Pull up a loop. Pull through one. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yarn over. Pull up a loop, and then just pull through two. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this all the way across. The last stitch will be worked, or the last woven stitch should be worked in the last single crochet of the row. Of the row. Okay, I'll go ahead and finish that, and then I'll show you what it looks like to work in between these loops. Now that we've worked the woven stitch in the last stitch, there we go, in the last stitch of the row, we're going to chain two, and then we're going to begin row 12, which says to chain 2, work woven stitch row in space between each woven stitch. So as you're looking at the woven stitches, there's a space in between each one. And that's exactly where we're going to work our stitches. I'll work a couple of them to show you. Also, don't forget to chain 2 and not 1, because when you get to the very end of this, the last woven stitch will be worked in the chain 2 space right here. Okay? So, I'll just work a couple of these. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to yarn over, stick it in between the two woven stitch, pull up a loop, pull it through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up another loop in the same space, and then pull through two loops on the hook like so. Yarn over, put it in the space in between the next two woven stitches, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two. I'll do one more. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through one loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull through two stitches. So I want to show you what this is looking like from the right side. Of course, the wrong side is facing, or the back side is facing us right now. Okay, so this is row 
number 12. Now we're going to do the same thing back and forth, back and forth using the woven stitch um, for rows 13 through 21. So when we complete row 21, we should have 11 rows. Okay, 11 rows of woven stitch, and then we will work the row to discontinue this stitch. So go ahead and work rows 13 through 21, which is a repeat of row 12, which is the row that we're on now. So when you have 11 rows of woven stitch, you can rejoin, and we will show you how to discontinue this row. Now that I've completed rows 13 through 21, I wanted to give you a look at this. And I also wanted to do one other thing. I wanted to measure this so that you get an idea of how wide this section should be. Okay. I'm getting approximately three and three quarters of an inch. Okay, yours doesn't have to be exactly three and three quarters of an inch. It might be four inches, it might be three and a half. It, it, it's not super critical here, but what is critical is sometimes people have a hard time with this woven stitch and can tend to pull it really, really tight. Um, if that is you, you may need to bump up to a larger size hook. Let me also show you, you know, the ending of this. It's reasonably, reasonably straight. Um, I will say that this stitch may tend to look a little bit bigger um, at, at this stage. It may, it may bulge a little bit more at the end. If, if that is you, don't worry about that too much because the row that we're going to work next, which is the row to discontinue the woven stitch, it's row 22 in your pattern. That is going to bring things back into check so it won't be you know too large. Now if it's really, really excessively large, um, much larger than this. If I hold it like this, you can see that this does look a little bit wider here. Um, that is not a problem. What we're going to do next is going to fix that. It's going to kind of rein it in a little bit and things will be okay. But I just do want to make sure that you have the freedom to change to the larger size hook if you're crocheting this extremely tight. Um, so always know that. The, the crochet hooks are always a, a suggestion. It's actually what the designer used in the process of designing the pattern, um, what you need may vary and feel always feel the freedom to change that. Okay, so I have to go ahead and go on to row 22. I'm going to chain one. We've been chaining two at the end of the woven stitch, but we just chain one because we're going to discontinue that. And the instruction says two single crochets in each space between woven stitches and in turning chain. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to simply single crochet two single crochets in the space in between the woven stitches all the way across and don't forget also two single crochets in the turning chain and that will bring our um, our stitch count right back to where it was at 252 while we were working the woven stitches it would have been half of that Okay, so whatever 252 divided by 2 is, that would have been your woven stitch count. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting two single crochets in between the woven stitches all the way across. Okay, um, let me give you one more assignment. Um, this, let me go ahead and, and, and flip it around. I haven't finished the row yet. I'm going to do that, but it's not necessary for me to show you that. Um, this is what you should have, and from this point on, the instructions are for rows 23 through 42, repeat rows 3 through 22. So in a nutshell, from row 3, which would be the beginning of the low front ridge, through the arrow stitches, to rows of single crochet, the low front ridge, and the 11 rows of woven stitch plus the row to discontinue the woven stitch. You're going to do that again. Okay. If you need a stitch uh, support on this, all you need to do is start this video again and begin with row three and you should be fine. Just repeat it exactly. After you do that, you're going to repeat rows three through 10. Okay. Rows three through 10 will take you again back to the woven stitch 
through the arrow stitch, two rows of single crochet, and the low front ridge stitches. Okay, those two rows. So rows three through ten after you complete um, rows three through twenty-two a second time. Okay, after I finish that, that's a huge assignment. After I finish that, I'm going to come back and show you the edging round, which will actually complete the stole portion. Okay, so I will see you after I complete that amount. Okay, for the record, this is what you should have. You should have a piece that looks something like this with the arrow rows, the woven stitch, the arrow section again, another woven stitch, and another arrow section. Okay, um, let me give you the dimensions. The stole should be approximately 17 by 77 inches. If it's not exactly that, please don't worry. That's, I think, more of a ballpark figure for a design like this. Um, if it's not exactly 77 and exactly 17, don't don't worry about that. If it's you know if it's even close, you're you're doing fine. Um, and, and depending on what kind of wool uh, you've chosen, what kind of fiber, you might even be able to do some blocking if you choose in the end. But I really don't think it's going to be necessary with this design. All right, now we are ready for the edging round. Okay, this round is going to be worked entirely around uh, the whole piece. So it says chain one and single crochet in each stitch across. So I'm going to go ahead and going to single crochet in each stitch across. At this point you should have the front side facing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and work this row with single crochet and then I'll show you what to do when you reach the end of this row. I've come to the end of the row, um, which is actually part of a round, but I'm just calling it a row because I went across one end. And now we're going to chain two. One, two, this is going to be for the corner. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by putting a single crochet in the same place as the last one. That'll be my first one of this section. And I'm going to work 50 single crochets evenly from end to end to the next corner here. And what I would do is just keep in mind that this section here, when you get to the middle of this arrow, that's the midpoint. So you should have about 25 stitches. So by the time you go from from uh, the corner to the middle of the second arrow. Okay, so that might be a way to save a little bit of pain if you're, you know, not real good at, at doing this across the end. Um, it may take a couple tries, and that's okay. That's not unusual for me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work 50 stitches across the end. I'll, I'll just go ahead and start off a little bit here just to show you what I'm going to do. So let's see, that's one, that's two. Three, four, and I really don't know if this is going to work the first time or not. Five, six, seven. I I'm just going to continue this and then I'll show you what I have. Okay, this is approximately 25 stitches, and so I just wanted to give you a feel just to see what the spacing might look like. Okay. So I'm just going to go with that. I like the way that this looks even. So I've got actually 26 was the center. So that's close enough for me. So now I have to do 24 more to the next corner. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, now I've got my 50 stitches across the, the end here. Okay, now I'm going to chain two again. And I'm going to single crochet in what remains of the foundation chain all the way across. Now also you can see I have a little strand here and I don't like hiding strands so I'm going to go ahead and do two things at once. I'm going to go ahead and single crochet. Again this is in the same place where the last single crochet was made then of course I have my chain two here and I'm just going to single crochet. This is across the foundation chain and I'm, I am hiding the loose strand at the very same time. Let's go ahead and get some more yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing this all the way across. If you've never done this before um, and you may have a hard time seeing the chain, what you can do is you can see how the stitch right here 
you can see where the single crochet was. Just go right in the same hole right there, okay? And I, instead of working through one strand, I just go ahead and work through re the remainder of the foundation chain so it will be completely hidden in this project. It might even be hard for a non-crocheter to find out where this actually started. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this and I'll get back with you. Okay, I've come to the end of doing this single crochet all across the foundation side. I am going to chain two again. I'm going to single crochet in the last place where I single crochet to form a corner. And you guessed it, I'm going to work 50 stitches evenly along this end. And just a review, you know, I'm going to shoot for 25 for the middle, 25, 26 to, to get to this point here, and then, you know, fill it out from there. So let me go ahead and do this across, and I'll show you what to do after you do this. Now remember, you know, just as a little bit of trial and error, but try to just crochet, you know, evenly the way you normally would. Okay, now I'll see what I get. Okay, this is the other end. Okay, I've got my 50 stitches across. And then so I've come to the place where we started this round. I'm going to chain two for our corner. And I'm going to slip stitch in the first single crochet of this round where we started. Okay, just like so. Pull it tight. And then I'm going to finish off. And then that will be the end of video number one. So at this point you should have your stole part completed. Of course it doesn't have lace yet. That will be video number four. Um, but if, for example, if you decided that you just wanted to have a stole only, I mean you could easily just put lace on the ends of both of these and just go with a stole. Um, but I go ahead and continue on to video number two and I will show you how to make the back section in that video. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.